All right. Hey guys. It's Wednesday again. I'll talk slowly uh, so we can wait for our live followers to join on. But uh, Wednesday is hump day, consult day, and we have lesson of the day, uh, which started a couple weeks ago, but I think it's useful because my consult days are very um, educational to people who come visit me because we run through probably 40 to 50 consults and uh, you get to hear me say the same thing over and over again like a broken record, uh, which is why it's funny when patients tell me in the future, they're like, I don't think you told me that. I'm like, well, I repeat the same thing every single time verbatim, so I think I did. But uh, today's lesson or what I heard of today a couple of times was patients trying to address an angry face, a tired face, also known as resting bitch face. So this episode we will call RBF. So resting bitch face or uh, RBF is when somebody is a nice person or not. I mean, they could be an asshole, but they look angry, sad, tired. And what you notice is that they just look tired while they're talking to you or they look frowny or they look angry. So there are three places that this comes from on most people and you can identify it if they say, oh my, I'm tired of people telling me always I'm tired or I'm always sad or things like that. So number one is just simple, it's the furrow. Mine's kind of Botox because I don't want any RBF. So it's your procerus muscle, which is this vertical muscle in the middle, which could have one or two bellies and the corrugators, which can extend out here in one or two lines. If somebody's over-exaggerated in that because of just their dynamic or stress or tension, it comes across as RBF, resting bitch face. So they're always angry. The other is ptosis, eyelid ptosis, blepharoptosis. It's hard for me to explain to patients what ptosis is, so I show them a picture. What it is, imagine you could always walk around like this where your eyes are open. That's the opposite of ptosis. You can be normal, where you're seeing the entire iris, all of it, or you could be drowsy, where you're only seeing half of the iris, or you're seeing, well, that would be severe, but you're, you lose a couple millimeters of show on the iris, meaning the circle of the eye. That's called ptosis, P-T-O-S-I-S. -S. I beg you not to pronounce the P, it's not there, it's ptosis. So that's blepharoptosis, um, blepharoptosis, blepharoptosis, and the, um, People look angry, sad, and tired. Also, like as they're driving later in the night, it tends to like fall down a little bit more and more. With that, you'll see that other people talk to you as though they're tired. They start to get sleepy as they talk because you project onto them sleepiness. So that's an interesting form of projection. Projection, people think, is just uh, emotional where someone's like stressed or angry and you project that onto somebody else and they feel your anger and your stress. That's called projection. But you can also have a physical projection where you look tired, someone else starts feeling tired. So they start yawning when they look at people with ptosis. The last is angular depression or frowning. So your chelion at the corner of the mouth has an angular depression, pulls downwards over time. That happens for a large number of reasons, but that is a very common reason for RBF that gets worse over time. So for this stuff up here, the easiest thing to do, which works on 90% of people is neurotoxins, that's Botox, Dysport, Xeomin, Juvo, uh, Meditox, you name it. You can use all those and you can inject them into here and a large proportion of people, it'll get it softer, fast enough that you don't need to do anything else. Some people have extra bulk there because they have really thick muscles. And then what you do is you inject it with a higher concentration and you have them come back two weeks later, inject it again, and now what it's gonna do is atrophy it. When your muscles aren't working so well, they're not getting their normal signaling, they shrink, they atrophy. Just like an astronaut going into outer space, they come back with weaker muscles and bones and have to do physical therapy. That's what happens. So you can actually shrink that bulk of muscle and make that area flatter and make it look happier. Some people have indentations that are so deeply indented, even Botoxing them is not enough. And you can put filler in there if you want. Careful though, it's a very dangerous filler area. If you inject into the dermal area, into the dermis itself, you're pretty safe. If you go down into the subdermis or where the muscle layer is, which is also right where the SMAS layer runs, you have these vessels that run across and you can blind someone. So you do have to be careful. Doesn't mean don't do it, just means be careful and do it with someone who's good. So that's how you treat that RBF. Let's say you do a brow lift. Brow lift, unless you go cut the muscles there, it doesn't get rid of that. You still have to do Botox. 
I do tell patients, don't go cut those muscles. You can disinsert the middle one, that will weaken it, you'll be safe. Uh, and then let the other ones work and then you can just do Botox, that's all. So then we get down to the ptosis. How do you treat ptosis? Uh, classically, we treat a ptosis with surgery called uh, ptosis surgery. There's conjunctival mullerectomy, there's a bunch of other procedures, but the ptosis uh, is fixed by going inside the eyelid, reducing the mucosa and the muscle and closing it up. You can alternatively do it from outside as well, but that's less predictable and used in other situations. If you don't have time to do that and you have all these events you're going to and you just look tired like this and mean, like you're just staring people down all the time and you wanna look bright and happy, you can get a, an eye drop. The eye drop that they have now is called Upneek, U-P-N-E-E-Q, and that's the company that took oxymetazoline, which is the medication that's in Afrin, and they diluted it and put it in the eyes. And what we were worried uh, with all these other uh, drops that we used in the eyes before, uh, for when patients got ptosis after Botox, is that the patient could have a refractory type of reaction where they actually get worse over time or have redness in the eye and rebound and that kind of stuff. You don't see that with Upneek, so it's safe to use every day. I still tell patients really just use it for events and things like that, but Upneek is pretty cool. So that gets rid of resting bitch face part number two. Resting bitch face part number three, that's the mouth. So we have this kind of chelosis happening where the chelion goes down over time. And this happens in patients, some patients naturally who are down talkers, meaning when they talk, they just do this and they get bands earlier in life and they get jowling earlier in life. So this part comes down, the modiolus gets stronger and they're always, they smile and then they pull right back down like that. So those are down talkers. That is a, like a physical tick that people have just like smiling. You can't get a smile off my face. If a photographer tells me to stop smiling, I'm like, okay, I can't stop um, because my muscle tone is always up in that direction. Alternatively, some people have muscle tone that goes in this direction and they know this because they look bitchy in photos. So they start to compensate for it. Um, and today I had the loveliest uh, actress and she's very pretty and very beautiful and young looking, but in photos and in video, she has to do that. She has to smile to release it. So that's one patient that it happens. And then you can Botox those patients or you can train them, not you train them, but they have to train themselves. But it takes a long time to retrain your muscles. There are some people who have done it since childhood because their mom told them, darling, don't make that resting bitch face. They didn't say it like that, but they said, don't make that face. You're furrowing, stop making that face. So they train them from an early age not to do it. And funny enough, when they grow up, they don't have those wrinkles. Um, so you can actually retrain your body. And uh, it takes a long time though. It'll probably take about a year for you to retrain so you're not a down talker when you talk and you do this and you kind of talk like that all the time. The um, other effect that it has is what I said is that people start to get, this is a different patient today. She had that and started to get droopy over time. Um, and she's only like 30 something and very beautiful and has not a lot of drooping in the face at all, but contracts down and with a little thinning of skin, you start to see droopiness around the side of the mouth. That happened on this patient because her teeth were prominent. So the jaw is prominent within the uh, lips. And when that happens, your mouth doesn't close in a relaxed fashion, doesn't close very easily. And this causes strain in the face. And the strain can show itself as asymmetries when people pull one side versus the other, or it can show itself as peau de orange, which is the pebbling of the chin, orange peel of the chin, or a depressor hypercontracture where it pulls the mouth down but it can also make your modiolus, which is the connection of all the muscles that are strong, and pull that down. So these patients come in at a young age and they look indented here and droopy here like they're jowling. And everybody's gonna tell them to do, do this one said, someone said, do threads, do um, facelift, do this, do that, do a million things. Realistically, they just gotta do Botox. You do Botox on this area, it relaxes it. And if you wanna tighten the skin around it, I do Profound, you could do Morpheus. And later, if you wanted to touch with a dot of filler here and there, a very, very small amount, you can. The risk with these patients is that somebody tries to fill them, does not look good, or they do threads, does nothing on these people. Threads might work for other stuff, does not work for these people. So long-term, um, this patient didn't come in asking me for this. She's like a model and she comes in and uh, I just gave her my advice saying, if this bothers you and you're worried about facial aging and you realize you have this strain in the face, I can Botox you, it's a Band-Aid, I'm patching it, but realistically, 
you got to go see a couple of friends of mine. So I referred her to Dan Grauer, who's an orthodontic uh, doctor, and then uh, Robert Relly, who's an orthonathic. Orthodontic, they work with the bones in the teeth. Uh, orthonathic, they work with the bones around the teeth. So um, they can actually move the teeth forward and backwards. And in this patient, if she were to take the whole jaw and move it back in, the rest of her face would calm down, it wouldn't be strained, and she would age better. Alternatively, let's, or otherwise, let's say she doesn't do that, over time, this will get more and more and more pulled. And there's no other way to prevent that, even if, uh, even if you're, you're Botoxing it. When you Botox around the mouth, and I'm not saying Botox because Botox is the only thing. Botox is like Kleenex. You can use Dysport, Juvo, Xeomin, Meditox, all of them. Um, they all work. So when you do it around the mouth, you have to be very careful so you don't knock out the mouth function. So um, the, you have to remember, the reason these people are straining their mouths is because they're compensating. They're trying to close their mouths and they're stressing to do it because their lip is stuck up here and when they relax, it stays up there. So her mouth is just open all the time like that. And when she wants to close her mouth, she has to do that. So she has to make this compensatory motion for the chin to move upwards. If you go Botox the shit out of it, they can't move, they can't do that anymore. I had the same uh, type of conversation with the other patient who had the ptosis today, and she was asking about forehead wrinkles, and I said, well, don't Botox your forehead wrinkles because you have ptosis. If you have ptosis and your eyes are like this and your eyebrows are always up, and you Botox that, your eyebrows will drop and you no longer have the compensation of trying to keep your eyes open. So you have to look at the face and realize that sometimes you have to strain for a reason. The strain is happening because there's another problem. So it helps you identify the problem, but also you don't get rid of the compensation all the time. If you get rid of the compensation, they're going to have problems. So if you get rid of the compensation of someone doing this all the time on a totic eye, they're going to feel heavy all the time and get worse. If you ruin the compensation of this, they won't be able to close their mouths, meaning B's and P's are gonna sound weak, their lip is gonna be floppy, their smile is gonna be all weird. Same with the upper lip, if you ever inject that too much, it's gonna to be too strong. So I like to go very weak around the mouth, I inject it and I say come back in two weeks and I'm gonna inject it again, that makes it easier. Let's say you're a genius, no, you know, no problem for a genius, a genius can go do all the fillers and the Botox at the same time predicting what's gonna happen. I'm not a genius, I can't do that. So what I do is I tell the patient, let me Botox you now, come back in two weeks, and I will take a look, see if I need to Botox you stronger, and then I can add a dot of filler at that point, because all these indents that you have right now and the jowling, half of it's gonna be gone by the time you come back in two weeks, so I don't even have to treat it. So that's all, that is Resting Bitch Face 101. Um, we'll see if anybody has any questions here. Guapissimo, that's not a question. Nathan Talia says, hi. Love you from Guatemala. Do you do brachioplasty? I don't, but my partner Robert Cohen does. Does lip lift have any risks? Of course it does, but they're very, very minimal risks. What type of doctor is that can move the jaw? That's the orthonathic surgeon. So around here, I refer to Robert Relly. There's Michael Gunson, Mike Gunson, who's in Santa Barbara, and he's amazing. And then in Brazil, which is down that way, we have Octavio Sintra, who is incredible. And if you see his photos, they're pretty amazing. I actually have a podcast with Octavio uh, that you can see. How do you improve the malar septum on someone with festoons? Mm, very difficult to do, Jen Hollander. Is there any solution for under eye puffiness? Complex compound question. Too many answers for that one. Dr. Ritu Chopra, what if you're really, really, just really, really good looking? That's a problem he has. He is too good looking. Janelle, the best. I noticed you seem to always recommend Profound, but I also heard you mention Morpheus. I have a friend who wants to try Morpheus here where I live. Do you recommend it? Yes, I like Morpheus. So Morpheus is a needle radio frequency and uh, it's in the same world of heat treatments as Profound. Profound is a true bipolar, meaning it puts in uh, pairs of electrodes that send from uh, negative to positive. Um, and that is, the electricity is very consolidated and it's more powerful than Morpheus, but they both work well. So Profound gets you here after one shot. Morpheus, it goes superficial and deep, but let's say you're trying to do for skin tightening, one Morpheus, two Morpheus, three Morpheus, four Morpheus, five, and it gets almost to Profound. Um, profound is still a better single treatment by far, I'd say, but Morpheus is more versatile, so you can use it superficial and deep. Master Jeff Official, 
Great doctor with unbelievable knowledge. Thank you, sir. Um, how, does Botox accumulate in the body? Botox does not accumulate to the body in any way that we know about, uh, but Botox can have permanent effects. The permanent effects of Botox, it's unlikely it has permanent effects, but some patients, when you inject Botox, let's say the allergy goes or whatever, the, the, those kind of quick things go, but if you cause muscle atrophy, like in their masseter, that can be permanent. That can last five years, 10 years, you know, we don't know. Uh, most patients, whatever problem they have from Botox goes away. It's very unlikely, highly unlikely for it to stay. Not impossible. Botox can reveal other problems that we didn't know about. Um, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, I think we went through most of the questions. So, beautiful. We will leave it at that. I will post this under our... Uh, we have these sessions kind of saving up, so I think we're on the third one, but I will do this every Wednesday that I remember after doing my consults. Uh, I heard a lot about Kaibella today, so maybe we'll save that for next time if it pops up.